Hi everyone. So, the second video. Three new problems. This one, you're going to need help with. But pause the video and see if you can make sense of it. See if you can put forces on. Because this is what's difficult about this problem. Where do the forces go? How does it make sense where those forces go? Once you've done that, the problem becomes easy. But it is not obvious where the forces go. So pause the video, do it on a separate bit of paper, try and put the forces down yourself, because this is one of the skills that you're going to have to be able to do. So do that now. Okay, so let's assume you've done that. <coughs> let's see if we match up. So you don't want to be racing off doing this by yourself, but we are going to need to discuss this problem. So, <clears throat> we've got that smooth peg which basically acts as a pulley, so that's essentially a pulley, okay? I think we're going to need a bigger diagram than this, so a nice big diagram. Here's my uh, wire, which is a rough wire, okay? Here's the ring, and the ring has a mass straight away, doesn't it? So therefore it has a weight mg. Here we have our string, here's the peg, and here's the mass here, also weight mg. There's going to be tension there, there's going to be tension there, tension there, just like a pulley problem, tension there. Okay, now we know this angle is 60 degrees. If we make that 90 degrees there, then this one must be 30 degrees. So I'm going to act like that. It's 30 degrees because I just prefer to look at it that way. Uh, I prefer to think of it like a slope type of problem. Now, where do the forces go? Well, let's start with tension. Tension is going to need to be split into its components. So this one is next to the angles, so this must be T cos 30. It's all going up, and therefore I've got a vertical one, T sine 30. Right? This is helpful. Now, there's going to be a normal reaction of that ring on that wire. It's touching the wire. It's touching the surface. Which way is it going, though? Which way is it being pushed against? Well, you can see that the ring is being stretched by tension. It's being pulled by tension. So it's going to touch the wire at this point here, isn't it? So therefore, the normal reaction, normal to the surface, as always, must be out here. Also, as the string is trying to drag it up, and obviously that other weight round here is trying to drag it down, then the ring is trying to pull up, or it's trying to pull, everything's trying to pull that ring up, and therefore friction is trying to oppose it to keep that in place. So this is our mu r going down here. Once that's established, this problem is okay. But getting those forces in the right place, that's what's hard. So now we can start solving the problem. So let's do it like we normally do. It's a combined particle. It's a combined system. What's the forces going down? Well, it's mg. Uh, and what else is trying to feed that force down? What else is helping it? Well, T sine 30 is helping it. I hope you understand that this is going... The particles flowing down and the string is trying to pull this thing up. Yeah? What's opposing it? Well, it's mu r and also the weight of the other particle, the ring. And this all equals zero because we're in equilibrium. As we're trying to find mu, let's make mu the subject. So the mg and the minus mg, they cancel then. So you get t sine 30 equals mu r. So therefore mu is t sine 30 over r. So we need to know what r is. Well, we can get that by resolving to the right or left, doesn't matter. What's the force going to the right? Well, that's t cos 30. What's the one going to the left? Well, that's r. And therefore, r must be t cos 30. So if we plug that back in, we get t sine 30 over t cos 30 equals mu. And the t's cancel, so you're left with just, as you know, sine over cos is tan, and tan 30 is 1 over root 3. 
because we've used g, we haven't actually calculated g anywhere, but so that answer is fine, but it's also fine to to write that as 0.588 to free SF in mechanics. Okay, so a new type of problem for you there, statics. <clears throat> Let's go for another problem. So a box of mass 2 kg is pushed up a rough plane by horizontal force. So just like before, you can pause the tape, you can draw the diagram yourselves, and then you can compare. Okay, so we've got our slope. So I'm assuming that you've done that now, so you can pause the tape. 2g pushed up a rough plane by a horizontal force of 25. Uh, what else have you got? 10. Uh, given the coefficient of friction between the box and the plane is 0.3, find the acceleration of the box. So it's accelerating here. Friction's going to be acting against it, so friction will put that here, and that's 0.3 R. There's a normal reaction there. I need to start splitting my weight component straight away. So this is next to the angle, 10 degrees, and therefore we've got this force, our second weight component. Remember, colors really do help. Um, so that's 10, isn't it? sine 10 degrees okay we also need to split up our 25 um, newton force so what angle is that well that is a z angle so therefore the whole thing here is also 10 degrees so we need to split this into parallel and perpendicular forces so the one which is going along the slope. Again, the diagram looks a bit busy, doesn't it? But I can see the one going along the slope is going to be like this. So 25 cos 10 because it's next to the angle. If you're not sure why that is, oh, this bloody board is crap, isn't it? Okay. 25 cos 10. Right, 25 cos 10. If you're not sure where that is, well, that is actually, you know, it's the force going along the plane. I hope you can see it is adjacent to the 10 degrees if I drew it like that, right? And then we've got your one, which is perpendicular to the plane, and that's going to be acting down. So 25 sine 10 degrees. And now you can work out this problem. So let's resolve in the direction of acceleration. Force going up. Remember, arrows on your components. Uh, so we've got 25 cos 10. Anything else helping it up? Not really. And now we've got 0.3 R, so that's the friction. And we've got our minus 2 G sine 10. That's our weight. And this all equals mass, which is 2 times acceleration. We need to know R first. So at the moment, I'm just going to rearrange to make A the subject. So that's 25 cos 10 minus 0.3 R, 2G sine 10, all over 2. So I need a final A, but I need to know what R is in order to do that. <coughs> and therefore, we resolve perpendicular to the slope. So R is going up. Anything else going up? Nope. So 2g cos 10 and 25 sine 10 equals 0. So therefore, r is 2g cos 10 plus 25 sine 10. There's r. <coughs> we can now put that into our a equation, which will be here. Um, so I'm literally putting that r into that R, aren't I? Uh, I'll write it up here. So A is 25 cos 10 minus 0 0.3 lots of our R, which is 2G cos 10 uh, plus 25 sine 10. And then we got our minus 2G sine 10 all over 2.
and therefore a equals so calculators out folks calculators out so 25 cos 10 really think you should be doing this at the same time as me uh, 2 times 9.8 times cos 10 plus 25 sine 10 minus 2 times 9.8 times sine 10 all over 2 and we get 7.06 meters per second squared to 3SF there we go. Cool. Last one then. <clears throat> so we've got a box of mass 1 kg placed on a plane, kept at an angle 40 degrees. Box is kept in equilibrium by light string. Blah, 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 blah. Limited equilibrium and maybe modeled as a particle. Tension of the string is 10. Yeah, you can see that. And the coefficient of friction between the box is mu. If the box is about to move up the plane, find mu. So, it's about to move up the plane. It's in limiting equilibrium, so friction must be opposing it. So straight away, mu r. Let's get our r in there. Let's get our mass in there. So and our weight. So that's g. Anything else we need? Yep. Like always always the same so this is going to be g cos 40 and g sine 40 that's good and now we've got our uh, 10 newtons to split up as well so this is our 10 cos 20 and also upwards 10 sine 20 and now we can solve this problem can't we so if we resolve up the slope, we've got 10 cos 20 trying to go up. Uh, we've got mu r opposing it, and we've got gene sine 40 opposing it. So that equals zero. Uh, we're trying to find mu, remember. So let's rearrange, get what it is that we want first. So I've moved that over. Then we can divide by our r to get mu which we don't know yet, so mu will equal, we leave that blank, and now we resolve perpendicular to the slope. Can you, I, I really hope you can see it's always the same, just where people mess it up, is that they just don't label their forces properly. That's, that's all it is. So now, <coughs> uh, what's going down? G cos 40 equals zero. So now we know what R is, so R is G cos 40, minus 10 sine 20. There's that. And now we can shove that into mu. So two, ugh, 10 cos 20 minus g sine 40 over g cos 40 10 sine 20. Just make sure that doesn't look like 140. So sine 40 equals, so calculators out folks doing this at the same time, 10 cos 20 minus, and again, if you're not getting the same answers as me, just tell me, because uh, these aren't checked, I'm just doing them. So minus 10 sine 20, so I get 0 0.758 to 3SF. And that's the end of that video then.